Hey everyone, welcome to Liftoff, the channel where we provide SpaceX news and updates and also update you on important development in the space race. In this episode, we have updates about a SpaceX Dragon ship return, Virgin Galactic's new license and news about a Hubble telescope. But before we move on to the updates, please subscribe to our channel. If you enjoy your time with us, please like us and share. Dragon ship finally home. A storm-delayed SpaceX spacecraft bid farewell to the International Space Station on Thursday for the ceremony back to Earth. The CRS-2020 Dragon cargo ship, undocked from the station's Harmony module at 10.40 a.m. EDT, departing for the return to Earth and an eventual arrival at the Gulf of Mexico of the coast of Tallahassee, Florida. It will take 37 hours for Dragon to return to Earth. Usually, a Dragon ship returns to Earth within a day or two of undocking or unberthing, as some of the experiments are typically refrigerated. The experiment will be sent back to NASA SpaceX Processing Facility at the Agency Kennedy Space Center in Florida to minimize the effect of gravity on the samples, the press release stated. But the agency said it could not rush the splashdown process. Certain parameters like wind speed and wave heights must be within a certain limits to ensure the safety of the recovery teams, the science and the spacecraft, NASA said in Wednesday press release. The ship carrying 5,000 libs, roughly 2,265 kilograms of equipment, experiments and other things was supposed to depart the station on Tuesday and the Wednesday. But continuous high winds and dangerous conditions from ELSA forced delays. The cargo ship departed the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on June 3rd for a docking on June 5th, carrying 7,300 libs or 3,311 kilograms of supplies for the space station crew. Among its cargo were new Boeing built ISS rollout solar arrays that spacewalking astronauts have been deploying this month to boost power levels on the ISS. Progress of Virgin Galactic Virgin Galactic announced Friday that the Federal Aviation Administration granted the company the license it needs to fly passengers on future spaceflights, a key hurdle as the venture completes development testing. The commercial license that we had in place since 2016 remains in place, but is now clear to allow us to carry commercial passengers when we are ready to do so, Virgin Galactic CEO Michael Colglazer told CNBC. This is obviously an exciting milestone and a huge compliment to the team. Virgin Galactic stocks jumped 38.9% in trading on Friday, its largest ever rise in single trading day to close at $55.91. While the FAA previously gave Virgin Galactic a launch site to conduct spaceflights, the license expansion allows the company to fly what the regulator calls spaceflight participants. The company completed a 29-element verification and validation program for the FAA, clearing the final two FAA milestones with its most recent spaceflight test in May. Cole Glazer noted that the last two milestones were specific to the spacecraft flight control system and internal navigation system. Notably, Virgin Galactic Chief Astronaut Trainer Beth Moses is the only non-pilot to fly on one of the company's spaceflights. To date, five Virgin Galactic employees, including four pilots, have became FAA-recognized astronauts, as the US officially views an altitude of 80 kilometers as the boundary to space. Trouble in Hubble The storied space telescope that brought you stunning photos of the solar system and enriched our understanding of the cosmos over the past three decades is expecting a technical glitches. Scientists at NASA say the Hubble Space Telescope payload computer, which operates the spacecraft's scientific instruments, went down suddenly. Without it, the instrument on board meant to snap pictures and collect data are not currently working. Scientists have run a series of tests on the malfunctioning computer system, but have yet to figure out what went wrong. It's just the inefficiency of trying to fix something which is orbiting 400 miles over your head instead of in your laboratory. Paul Hartz, the director of astrophysics for NASA, if this computer were in the lab, 
we'd be hooking up monitors and testing the inputs and outputs all over the place and would be really quick to diagnose it, he said. All we can do is send command from our limited set of commands and then see what data comes out of the computer and then send that data down and try to analyze it. At first, NASA scientists wondered if a degrading memory module on Hubble was to blame. Then, on Tuesday, the agency said it was investigating whether the computer's central processing module or its standard interface hardware, which helps the CPM communicate with the other components, caused the problem. Hart said the current assumption, through though unverified, was that the technical issue was a random part failure somewhere on the computer system, which was built in 1980s and launched into space in 1990s. Most of the Hubble components have redundant backups. So once scientists figure out a specific component that's causing the computer problem, they can remotely switch over to its backup part. The rule of thumb is when something is working, you don't change it, Hart said. We'd like to change as few things as possible when we are bringing Hubble back into service. The instrument that a payload computer operates, such as advanced camera for a survey that captures images of space and the cosmic origin space photograph, which measures distant sources of ultraviolet light, are currently in safe mode and not operating. The telescope itself, which runs on a different system, has continued to operate by pointing at different parts of the sky on a set schedule. The reason we do that is so that the telescope keeps changing its orientation relative to the sun in the way that we had planned and that maintains the thermal stability of the telescope, keeps it at the right temperature, Hart said. The last time astronauts visited Hubble was in 2009 for its fifth and final service mission. Hart said that because Hubble was designed to be serviced by the space shuttle and the space shuttle fleet has since been retired. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. Please like us and hit the subscribe button so we can notify you when the next episode is available. Until next time, it's bye for now from all of us at Liftoff.